Hello there, thanks for joining me on 7 edition this Wednesday. I'm Azina Najri and these are tonight's top stories. PM says Malaysia has not touched Singapore's border. Top COP warns anti ISERD rally participants to not touch on racial sensitivity. And 24 year old undergraduate nabbed for pimping via social media app. Now, Malaysia is well within its rights to extend the Johor Bahru port as it has not trespassed onto Singapore's territorial waters of Tuas. Prime Minister Tun Dr Mahathir Mohamad said today that the distance from the border can be measured to determine the claims made by the Singaporean government. On Tuesday, the Singapore government strongly protested Malaysia's purported move to expand its port boundaries, which violates sovereignty and international laws, saying that it will not hesitate to take firm action against intrusions and unauthorised activities. Singapore's Transport Ministry also claimed that ships and vessels from Malaysia have been repeatedly intruding into Singapore's territorial waters of Tuas over the past two weeks, including vessels from the Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency, MMEA, as well as the Marine Department, Malaysia. Singapore's Maritime Port Authority also issued its own Port Marine Circular on November 30th, instructing shipmasters and owners of vessels to disregard the Malaysian government's gazette. Meanwhile, Malaysia has urged Singapore to immediately withdraw its Port Marine Circular issued on November 30th and prevent its enforcement agencies from further intruding into Malaysia's territorial sea, as well as harassing vessels and those lawfully permitted to be present in the area. Transport Minister Anthony Locke said the actions by Singapore amounted to serious violations of Malaysia's sovereignty and the international law. Well, there is no immediate plan, but, uh, but we are open. We are open to, to discussions, through dialogues, uh, through uh, negotiation. As I mentioned uh, in Parliament, uh, the new government is not taking a confrontational approach. Okay? We are not being unreasonable, but uh, we are just protecting our own rights. And we have our position, uh, we protect our position. He also said such actions were unconducive to good bilateral relations, which could cause confusion for the international shipping community and lead to increased navigational and safety risks to all parties. In response to a press statement by Singapore's Transport Minister on December 4th, Locke stated that Malaysia found the Republic's claims on the altered port limits for Johor Bahru port to be inaccurate as it had not in any way encroached any part of the country. He added that it was also within Malaysia's right as a sovereign state to deploy its enforcement and relevant competent agencies in its territorial sea. Now, in another development, the Prime Minister has called on unions to act as bridges between workers and employers. Due to this, the workers must choose trustworthy union leaders who can adapt with changes and not function as mere picket organisers. According to Tun Dr Mahade, even though the adoption of automation is growing and making workers redundant, they can still earn better wages if they improve their skills, such as learning how to control machines. Kesatuan sudah tidak boleh cuma menjadi juara pekerja seperti masa lalu, menjadi pengatur piket dan lain-lain demonstrasi desakan kepada majikan. Peranan hak mereka hari ini lebih menjurus kepada penghubung di antara pekerja dan majikan kerana ter, ke, keperluan pekerja serta expectation mereka ataupun keperluan majikan terhadap pekerja juga turut berubah 
dan lebih kompleks. He said this at the 21st Union of Post Malaysia Uniform Staff UPUS delegation conference held in Shah Alam Selangor today. This is the first time Tun Dr Mahathir has graced the event for the Union for Postmen, the oldest workers' union in the country. Set up in 1959, it now boasts some 7,000 members in Peninsular Malaysia. Now the luxury yacht Equinimity, purportedly linked to fugitive businessman Lotek Joe or Joe Low, will be sold at a price tag to the tune of hundreds of millions of ringgit by March 31, 2019. This is the second stage of the judicial sale process that the sheriff of the Admiralty Court deemed would be beneficial in securing the optimum value for the super yacht. Council S. Sitpa, who acted for One Malaysia Development Burhad, One MDB, and two of its subsidiaries, said the sheriff will be seeking the necessary orders from the court to commence the second phase of the judicial sale by private treaty. She also said this part of the judicial sale process was held open for one month and much interest to purchase of the equanimity has been recorded. She added the nine-digit asking price would be available upon application once the approval of the Admiralty Court is obtained. Now, on August 23rd, the government, 1MDB and its subsidiaries, 1MDB Energy Holdings Limited and 1MDB Global Investment Limited, had filed a court order seeking to expedite the sale of the vessel. The super yacht was handed over to Malaysia on August 7th after it was seized off Bali by Indonesian authorities in February at the request of the U.S. authorities following its probe into 1MDB. Former Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, MACC Chief Commissioner Tan Sri Zulkifli Ahmad, was summoned to the Graft Busters headquarters in Putrajaya today to have his statement recorded to assist investigations into the alleged tampering of the 1MDB final audit report. He arrived at the building at 10.25 a.m. and left five hours later. Tan Sri Zulkifli is among the witnesses sought by the MACC in the probe. Previously, on November 25th, Auditor General Tan Sri Dr. Madinah Muhammad revealed that the report was modified and former Prime Minister Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak was aware of the matter. Tan Sri Zulkifli was appointed as the Chief Commissioner of MACC on August 1, 2016, replacing Tan Sri Abu Qasim Muhammad. However, on May 14, he sought to end his service and subsequently returned to serve at the Attorney General's chambers. Now, Inspector General of Police Tan Sri Muhammad Fuzi Harun today reminded the organisers and participants of the International Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Racial Discrimination, ICID rally planned this Saturday, to not touch racial sensitivity as well as to respect the law. The top cop stressed that everyone's safety was assured as long as the rally remained peaceful. Kita punya harapan agar sesuatu perkara yang tidak diingini tidak berlaku. Kalau nak beri pun, beri pun. Tapi kita akan buat, uh, kita akan regulate dan buat pemantauan sewajarnya. Agar tidak ada perkara-perkara yang melanggar peraturan dan boleh memecahkan keadaan keselamatan, uh, keamanan uh, apa ni, di ibu negara khususnya pada ketika tersebut. Dan uh, seboleh-bolehnya perkara-perkara yang berkaitan dengan sifil ini tidak di bangkitkan secara ketaruan ataupun membakar sentimen uh, golongan-golongan tertentu. Jadi kalau ini berlaku nanti akan ada tindak balas. Bila ada tindak balas balik keadaan dah reda ni mungkin akan uh, berkocak semula, bergolak semula. Jadi we must avoid all this. Initially, the rally promoters wanted to hold a mega protest against the government's plan to consider rectifying the ICERD. But now, even though the government has reversed its stance, they insist on going ahead with gathering, this time to celebrate the decision. Now, police have arrested 446 individuals, many of whom are teenagers believed to be involved in terrorism activities led by the Daesh militant group, which is actively recruiting members in Malaysia. Bukit Aman Special Branch's Counter-Terrorism Division Principal Assistant Director, Dato Ayub Khan Maidin Piche, who revealed this, said many youths have fallen prey to the group's ideologies. Kalau dulu kita lihat penyebatan uh, remaja belasan tahun yang hanyalah di peng, uh, ya, yang peranan mereka tak penting ya. hanya untuk menyebarkan elogi, mengumpulkan dana, menjadi ahli biasa. Tapi yang kita tangkap di Malaysia untuk tahun ini dan tahun lepas, uh, mereka telah mengingat peranan utama uh, yang 17 tahun kita tangkap. 
dan uh, dibicarakan uh, terlibat dalam untuk merancang untuk melancarkan serangan bom petrol uh, untuk koktel di pusat-pusat uh, hiburan di KL. He was speaking in an interview after a recording of TV Tiga's Soal Rakyat program, which is scheduled to air at 11 p.m. today. Dato Ayub Khan Maidin also said some of the youths arrested revealed that they acted as a lone wolf and even learned how to make a bomb from the internet. He added in many of the cases, the parents of these teenagers were also unaware of their children's involvement in Daesh. Now over in Kelantan, an undergraduate was picked up by police for allegedly being a pimp and offering prostitutes through a social media application. The 24-year-old student of a private institution of higher learning was nabbed during raids conducted at two apartments in Kota Baru last night. The student, who is enrolled in a human resources course, was arrested by a police team from the State Anti-Vice, Gambling and Secret Societies Division at 7.30 p.m. at Lorong Minyak Gas. A 36-year-old woman who was entertaining her customer was nabbed in another raid at the same apartment building. In the third raid at Jalan Post Office Lama, two other women aged 27 and 40 were detained. Police said the undergraduate from Chiras Kuala Lumpur acted as the women's pimp to deal with customers using the WeChat app before meeting customers at houses around Kota Baru. Investigations revealed the three women who were freelancing and moved from one state to another offering sex service for 300 ringgit per session. During the operation, cops also seized sex lubricant, condoms, three mobile phones and nearly 3,000 ringgit cash, believed to be proceeds from the illegal activity. The case is being investigated under the Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Smuggling of Migrants Act. Now, in a follow-up in Sarawak, police have ruled out any acts of terrorism in the explosion at City One Mega Mall at Jalan Song in Kuching yesterday afternoon. State Deputy Police Commissioner Dato Zuraidi Ibrahim said the investigation by the police on the explosion did not indicate any elements of terrorism were involved. Tidak ada penglibatan militan yang dikatakan apabila berlakunya suatu letupan yang ini lebih kepada kemalangan gas, letupan uh, saluran gas yang berlaku lebih kurang jam 3.30 petang malam. Dari saya nak tegaskan di sini, pihak polis telah menjalankan siasatan dan kita tidak ada unsur-unsur jenayah dan juga yang berkaitan dengan militan. Police have also classified the death of the three victims as sudden death based on the post-mortem conducted at the Sarawak General Hospital. The three deceased were identified as Sarawakians, 49-year-old O Kui Lim and Chin Sien Lung, age 29, as well as 24-year-old Chi Kiam Jung from Pulau Pinang. Meanwhile, the City One Mega Mall owner Stephen Long Tain Chung said they will provide financial assistance to the victims' immediate families. A motorcycle patrol unit MPU officer was killed while his colleague was injured after a car skidded and crashed into their motorcycles in the capital early this morning. Constable Mohammad Zamri Sinsian, age 26, died at the scene while his 23-year-old colleague, Constable Osman Ibrahim, suffered head injuries. Meanwhile, another MPU officer at the scene, Corporal Mohammad Shamsul, escaped unhurt. In the 3.50 a.m. incident, the three officers were riding on three motorcycles and were conducting checks on a stalled car on Jalan Samantan. Another car, which was descending the road, skidded and crashed into two of the officers from behind. The 44-year-old man dri male driver of the car has been detained and brought to the Kuala Lumpur Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department for an alcohol test. The victim's body has been sent to the Kuala Lumpur Hospital for a post-mortem, while the injured officer is now being treated at the University of Malaya Medical Center. Investigations on the case is currently underway. Meanwhile, in Nilai Negeri Sembilan, a trailer attendant was killed and a driver was severely injured when their vehicle crashed into a lorry at kilometer 282.5 of the North-South Expressway near the Toa Plaza. B. Tina Karen, aged 39, died on the spot due to severe head injuries while the 37-year-old driver broke his right leg. In the midnight incident, the driver is believed to have lost control of the 40-ton trailer, which was loaded with vegetables and crashed into the rear of the three-ton lorry. 
The two vehicles then overturned and were dragged for about 60 metres. The accident, which occurred in the middle of two lanes, caused a 10-kilometre traffic jam that lasted for almost an hour. The case is being investigated under the Road Transport Act 1987. Moving on, the National Higher Education Fund Corporation, PTPTN borrowers, earning more than 2,000 ringgit a month, will no longer be able to escape repayment once the scheduled salary deduction, PGB, is implemented this January. The scheme will emulate the Inland Revenue Board, IRB's monthly tax deduction, PCB system, in which PTPTN will be in direct contact with employers who will then be responsible for mandatory salary deductions. PTPTN Chairman Wan Saiful Wan Jan said they will issue a directive to employers to carry out the deductions according to the percentage set in the PGB scheme. He said PTPTN will work with relevant agencies, among them the IRB, the Employees Provident Fund EPF, the Retirement Fund Inc, KWAP and the Immigration Department to obtain salary information as well as details of borrowers' employers. He said based on the information, PTPTN will issue a directive for employers to deduct salaries according to the percentage set. Employers will be responsible for deducting the salaries of their staff for the purpose of PTPTN loan repayment. In the 2019 budget, Finance Minister Lim Guan Eng initially announced that the government will be implementing a scheduled salary deduction scheme of between 2 to 15 percent for borrowers earning more than 1,000 ringgit a month. However, the threshold was later amended to 2,000 ringgit. Presently, 1.4 million of the 2.9 million PTPTN borrowers have not made repayments. One Saiful said employers who help their staff to repay their PTPTN loans via PGB will be entitled to tax relief for the amount paid. Up next, Grandma who went viral two years ago completes her master's. That and more when we return. Don't go away. Thanks for staying with us. Now on to the Day One Riot sitting. Cameron Highlands MP Datuk C. Sivaraj was ordered to leave the Day One Riot today following a recent court ruling that nullifies the BN lawmaker's electoral win in his constitu constituency due to bribery. Speaker Datuk Muhammad Arif Mat Yusof gave the marching orders to allow Datuk Sivaraj to clarify whether there is a stay on the election court's decision that declared his MP status as invalid. Ingin nasihatkan Cameron Highlands untuk berjumpa dengan seorang peguam yang pakar untuk memutuskan sama ada rayuan yang difailkan secara otomatik mengakibatkan satu pengantungan keputusan mahkamah. Ini penting. Because otherwise, if there is no stay, you are a stranger in the house. Jadi untuk sementara waktu, sila tinggalkan majlis. Dapatkan pendapat peguam, berikan kepada pejabat speaker. Datuk Sibaraj claimed that in the court's judgment, there was no links to bribery. It was earlier reported that the election court had nullified BN's GE14 victory in the Cameron Highlands parliamentary seat after finding elements of corruption. Datuk Sibaraj also told the speaker that he was 14 days, he has 14 days, to appeal the court's decision. Now, in other news, Google-owned video-sharing website YouTube has registered 16 Malaysian channels which have breached the 1 million subscription mark. Google Malaysia country manager Mark Wu said the figure is a significant increase from only one Malaysian channel with a million subscribers in 2016. Now, on top of this, Wu said over 4,000 local YouTube channels have also garnered more than 10,000 subscribers. Anyone, I believe, can become a content creator on YouTube, right? And when they do reach a certain, a certain threshold and they meet our criteria to be a trustworthy content creator or a partner on YouTube, they have the ability to make money. So the videos that you see on YouTube, they get served ads and we have a revenue share model between YouTube and the content creator. And I believe that um, you know, YouTube as a platform for social impact. 
Earlier, the company announced 10 local YouTube channels with astounding subscription growth in 2018, garnering hundreds of thousands of subscribers in less than a year. Among the channels are Robe Cube, Farid Edi Viral TV, Future Music Entertainment, Ustad Azhar Idris Official, Machi Bawang and Alif Sata. The topics featured in these channels range from music and entertainment to food, health and living tips. And with that, we'll hop on to Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. So people say if there's a will, there's a way. Age doesn't seem like an obstacle for an 82-year-old lady to achieve her goal of earning a master's degree. Datin Siti Hendon Abdullah, who was once viral back in 2016, has grasped the attention of netizens yet again. Here's the story. In 2016, Datin Siti Hendon Abdullah became an internet sensation when her grandson, Adam Zainal, posted a photo of her working on her master's paper on Twitter. The post garnered over 27,000 retweets. Now, after two years of endeavours, Siti Hendon has finally graduated with her master's degree from one of our local private college, UNITA, in November. The memorable event of her life was also witnessed by her beloved husband. To top things off, Siti Hendon successfully achieved her dream while running a kindergarten besides having four children, 18 grandchildren and two great-grandchildren at the age of 82. Impressive. As someone who loves to expand her horizon, she is currently planning to further her PhD. To Datin Siti Hendon, we are all wishing the best for you. And remember, peeps, age is definitely just a number. Now, a video of a police officer beating up a man has gone viral since last night. The officer, who was in full uniform, is seen harshly asking the man to stand up before he started to strike him on his head. <laughs> He then kicked the man to the ground while forcing him to confess which gangster group he was from. Even though the victim kept apologizing, the officer continued beating and pulling his hair before pushing him violently. Based on the victim's voice, he is believed to be a local. The police officer had even asked the person who recorded the incident to stop recording and to delete the video of his brutal acts. A police spokesman confirmed that the incident happened but refused to further explain the actual situation. Investigation over the case is currently underway and the cop's identity has yet to be revealed. And now updated as of 7pm, here are the top trending topics and searches on the internet today. Malaysia's exports in October breached the 90 billion ringgit mark for the first time to hit a record high of 96.38 billion ringgit, according to the Malaysia External Trade Statistics Report released by the International Trade and Industry Ministry, METI. That was a jump of 17.7% from 81.86 billion ringgit reported in the same month last year. Meanwhile, imports increased to 80.05 billion ringgit from 71. 0.85 billion ringgit, while the trade surplus widened by 63.1% to 16.32 billion ringgit, the largest ever recorded thus far. Now, for the first 10 months of 2018, total trade also expanded 6.5% year on year to 1.56 trillion ringgit. Okay, Malaysia's trade continued its positive growth momentum in October 2018, expanding by 14.8% to 176.43 billion compared to the same month last year. 
So this is a, a very big uh, record for Malaysia, where exports in October 2018 recorded a new milestone, reaching 90 billion for the first time.